to do the, we'll switch them around in a minute. So a frog will shed just like a snake skin. And they, it's kind of what we call molting. When a horse molts or the frog sheds, it's due to environmental conditions. So if the environment's really, really wet, the frog will get really skinny. This one's been out in a dry line. And this one's actually really grown. Once we trim the foot, we bring the foot where it needs to be, the frog will kind of open up. Now, we really like to see that the drier, the better. If we dig down in here, this is a really healthy one right now because all that's connected, okay? That, you wanna to touch it? Come here. Yeah, come here, right here, touch that. Feel that, feel it. Touch it. Oh, that feels real weird, doesn't it? Who else wants to touch it? Y'all come over here, don't come up behind her. Who else? Wants to come this way. Y'all wanna feel it? I mean, y'all wanna study, keep your head up, Colt. Come on. Who wants it? Come try. Who wants to try? Oh, I ain't scared of them. Who would like All to right. try to be brave? I will hold your hand. Oh. Alright, look. You want to try? I know you do. Come on. Come around here. Feel it. Oh, weird. Mm -hmm. Alright, let's give her a break and let her stand back on because I've already loaded that other foot. Okay, so in between the frog, they get bacteria. This is kind of like, people believe that wild horses, why don't wild horses need to be trimmed or made by a farrier in the wild? Because generally speaking, y'all like to hunt, anybody like to hunt? They get hunted. The weaker die, they get hunted. And so when you see certain feet in the wild, horses will, if they got bad legs or what have you, they're prey for other animals. It's a circle of life. And so usually when we have horses in what we call keeping or domesticated horses, we like to keep them trimmed, shod for purposes. And shod means what? To what? Shoe. Horseshoe. Right? And we'll get to that in a minute, but let's get back to the frog. So the foot, the frog will change its environment. So we go on to a bunch of sand, sand, it aerates. It's a lot of air and sand and it's really clean. And so that frog will get really, really wide. Louisiana, East Texas, any Southern region of the United States, you generally see them like so. It's kind of the skinnier way doing it. So, now the foot is compromised with a toe and a heel, just like you, a toe and a heel. Okay, so if we have a lot of toe, that means that if we have a lot of toe, the toenails are too long, they bend. So, if they bend, they put pressure in that leg. Whoever has done a push up and they hurt right here behind that, that hurts, doesn't it? Never. It's the same thing with having a toe too long on a horse. Same exact thing. So what I normally do in my job, or what I don't, what I, my normal work day to day is, is that I simply I shoe, ferry a lot of sport horses, rodeo horses. And what I do is I generally say, okay. I look at the environment, I see if the kids are riding them, if the adults are riding them, what type of ground we're on. And I say, okay, let's look at the frog here. I'm gonna make it a educated guess. I was like, well, okay, well, the frog looks healthy enough. I don't need to trim that frog. <laughs> Usually, if it's overgrown, it's too big, we'll kind of trim it back. And underneath that, sometimes there's a milk gland, we call it. Basically, it looks like if you're hitting, when you trim it real short, the frog will actually calcify itself and give secretions of synovial fluid that helps that there's a joint right in there. There's a joint right there and you can actually see, if you draw an outline of it, of a bone right there. 
and it's got a little valley there and a little valley there. So there's two bones in the foot. There's a coffin bone, and there is a navicular bone. And the navicular bone looks like a itty bitty piece of, just like a little rectangle, and it sits like that. So the frog's job is to support the navicular bone in the coffin joint. So don't make a long story short, if you got a foot that's like this, you need to make it like that. And if he's got too much or no too little pressure, he does that. He helps that joint, pushes against the joint. Okay, so who's got a question right now about the frog? Yeah. Anybody? I do. No, stu no stupid question. What is it? No, you're right though. I, I know what you're talking about. So when the frog goes on the ground, right, it loads, it does this. It does this, it loads, it loads and it jumps off the ground. It, it basically makes the horse come back off the capsule. It's a good question. I know what you're talking about. It jumps, yeah. You see that? So anyway, we're just gonna stick to the jumping aspect. We won't go into the atmosphere of living in a fish tank or anything like that. We don't do that, right? We're gonna do the other side, so they won't miss anything. So anyway, so when we're looking at feet, we look at angles. There's, there's a deep flex, there's a superficial tendon, a deep flexor tendon, and another tendon. It's called the uh, suspensory tendon or the suspensory apparatus. And that makes them stand there like a skeleton. There's a lateral and there's a main extensor that makes it extend, right? And there's a lot, a lot of nerves. And this is the coronary band. A lot of people want to know what that is. Have you ever heard of that? That means that this thing here feeds that foot. And it ends right here. So the capsule keratinizes. What does keratinize mean? It gets hard, right? Right. Like your nail goes around so everything from if this gets cut then there's a split that occurs in anywhere around that a horse that gets too long in the toe they'll get a split you can see it okay so we generally maintain feet and my job is to maintain that split or get the split out of it so we're going to show a horse All right. Don't move them, please. Okay. These are farrier tools. Y'all went to the blacksmith shop over there from Moonville yesterday. These are some of the tools. Modernized, I should say. And he said that you were an incredibly skilled fellow, so they need to pay attention. Yeah. So look, when you have this foot, I don't touch the frog. I brushed it. I saw that was good. I need this out of the way, just in case you have to go. So, when I look at this foot, I start to feel, well, you know, we got a pretty decent foot. And for the purpose of this demonstration, we won't take a lot of time. So I hold the foot. Between your legs. That's right. I, and I'm driving my hips, right? So when I, I go down, this is a rasp. It's a fingernail file for you guys. The rest of your fingernails, right? It's made for horses. This is what we call a finishing one, the final touch. This is the more the Excalibur, the big one. Get her in straight. This is the bigger one. This is to take a lot of foot off. This has got a more of a wet environment. It lasts longer. She hadn't been really wet, so I'll use a smaller one. It's a little sharper today. So I just want to go flat. I want to get to the plane of that frog. You see that frog right there, y'all? That's the one to distribute, that's, that's the weight distribution, right? So all I'm just gonna do is, I'm pretty close there. So I'm just gonna take the high spots off. So, and what am I taking off? This is the wall. This is just the nail that looks like ours. They grow based on grass, grain, or any type of cookies you feed them, or any type of sweets. So what happens is, as the nail grows this away, 
it gets longer. And so we generally get splits. So what we have to do is back it up, back it up. That does, it removes the split or puts a 45, what we call a, not a sharp edge. Now, same thing with the heels. Whatever we do to the front, we do to the back. And we go back, 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 back. Now, I'm gonna look at the frog. I got a belly now down underneath there. So, there's no pressure on this portion on the foot. No, anybody know who that portion is? No. It's called the sole. The sole distributes weight accordingly across. You can have high spots, you can have low spots, and you can see it's pretty high or pretty low. We got a belly down there, which is good, so it's kind of like a ceiling or a church cathedral. It's got a big arch to it, so that means it's strong. It allows the foot to pack with sand or dirt and let that frog pump, pump blood or help the arteries and the vessels shunt it back up to the heart. So, we call that the heart of the horse. Y'all know that? It looks like a heart, doesn't it? It does. So anyway, I'm gonna put this level. That's all I'm doing, I'm just getting a level. Flat. Now look, y'all don't think you ever use mathematics when you get older, you're gonna use it, a lot of it. A lot of fractions in shooting horses. I make a lot of horseshoes. For today, I just brought one out of my trailer. So usually, I'm using fractions in making shoes to fit the horse. So three quarter, four and a half. Pretty close, right here. A. Right, jump it up three quarter, nine inches. Here we go. So, there's your fractions. So, the knife is used to take down the, any high points of the sole. It's kind of like a fingernail. Oops, too high, too sharp. And all I'm doing now is taking down any or high spots. It's like a board. Anybody ever cut a board? Ever seen somebody cut a board with a saw? Yeah, you seen your moms or dads do that. Aunts, uncles, grandpas, cousins, neighbors, right? You cut a board, you seen it on TV. YouTubers, right? Yep. It's the same thing. You cut too much of it off, you can't put it back on. Horses live on their feet. The number one thing I come behind other practitioners or farriers, they cut the short horse too short. Boy, does it make my business a lot more money, too. So I come in there and I just do very minimal work. There's less because they already took it off. They have taken it off, I should say. So anyway. Anyway, so that's it. This yellow looking thing here is the white line. Okay, the white line is what we call the lamina. The lamina is what we have called in our body, the cuticle. The cuticle then in part is for growing the hoof capsule. Now, it grows the toe. Let me put her down a little bit. It grows the toe. So now, I draw normally, when I get to where I like her, or get to where I think she's really where she needs to be, I use a lot of different fancy tools, easy call. Turn her head back this way. There you go. Now we're we'll cooking a little. Alright. So now I'm gonna check for her foot. Now y'all can see. So now I look for a hairline. Is there any is there any bellies? There's none. She's pretty plum. There's one just right there, just a little bit. I can get out, okay? And that's what I look for. I don't, I don't want to take it all off. All I'm doing is manicuring the nail so that she can live on her feet 
out in the field or my wife rider, which is hardly ever happened. So that's what that looks like. Okay, and then we can come around and do the same thing on this side. So all I'm doing is I'm not taking any foot. I'm just looking to see if there's any bruising or if there's any in, any cuts. That's what we're grooming the wall for. And then I come in usually and I shave it like this. It makes it really nice. It sands it down. And look, there's skin over here. So that's skin, right? like the thing now so if I take all the skin off I got to put some skin back on and I got something in that little old uh, tube right there fingernail polish it is exactly what it is I use that thing on my feet sometimes take the corns off literally I'll put that thing in and take the corns off it tell you like oh man awesome so this is a horseshoe nail it's got two sides to it. It's beveled. It means it shoots out. The higher you go, the more chances that you're gonna hit the cuticle. We normally know, I do not like to put a lot of nails in a foot because I think that if I can develop a good capsule so that that frog, again, can hit the ground and work, expand, do its job, jump off the ground, support the blood, right? Okay, we got you with me, huh? You're right there, huh? It helps. So, what I like to do is, I like to figure out certain angles. Okay, step back there. So what I normally do, and you can see, Colt, if I put, that nail in like that, it'll come out, right? That's dead tissue. That's like having a having a fingernail too long. You just drill a nail. It's the same thing. So for strength, I like to. Oh, sorry. I like to put them in close to the foot. See, it comes out. It's the same thing. And it doesn't hurt if, it does not hurt the horse. A lot of people think it does. But if Joe Blow the Wrangler, who is not properly schooled, and he can actually cripple one, or she can actually cripple one if they cut them too short. And then that nail won't come out properly it's just like us it's a nail salon get your feet done it's the same thing so today we're gonna do with two nails come around y'all don't know this but Colt can nail one on too I can't tell y'all but he can't okay <laughs> so what I like to do is Cut the nail appropriately for the length of the foot. Sometimes horses are, they get to, you don't want a low nail. This is a weak nail, the higher the nail. So usually I like to scribe a line somewhere around in, right there. That would be three quarter. That would be your nail. There's options to do. So when we, how do we secure the shoe? We have a gouge. It's, got, it's a good little groove, right? It's got a groove. It's gonna cut. It's gonna cut a little groove in it. Like that. It makes a little bit hole in it. Very little, right? And it's like a bed. It's like, it's just like you sleeping in the bed, right? It's the same thing as what we call a nail bed. These are clinchers, alligator clinchers, to be exact. You get underneath the nail. Y'all can see the nail down there underneath, squeeze, lift up. It puts it in the bed. Same thing there, up. So usually you sharp, you check for sharp edges, right? So I'm looking, y'all heard a grinder go off because I've already cheated. 
I didn't want to have to do it over here. So I got a lot of people that pick, I got kids that pick their horses' feet out, moms and dads, grandpa, grandpa, you know, grandmas, grandmas. Oh, politically speaking, I should go there. Anyway, they don't want to cut themselves. This shoe cannot be a weapon at all. A weapon would cut this horse at any time. So I generally just kind of look for sharp edges. And it looks kind of silly two nails today, but she's gonna get this thing pulled off exactly because I'm gonna use her next week or week after next for a test. And I gotta have more hoof. I can't take it all off. So, and what I like to do is just set it down easy because you get more respect from the animal as you see her pulling on it. If I set it down more, gent if I set it down very gently, I should say, I get more favor with the horse. If you just drop it, you slam it on the ground, they can fracture the coffin bone, the victim bone, they can cut their frog. Okay, so now the nail salon's almost over. And I'm gonna trim her hind feet so y'all can see. And if you can see a split. So this is what I normally do with my stuff. Now my day-to-day -day works like this, real simple. I don't try to get, I don't try to get in the horse's way. I try to let them listen to them. When we say listen is, we watch them walk. If they're lame over here, then we say veterinarian. Hey, got a problem with the horse. It's the doctor of the horse, y'all. Y'all know what a veterinarian is? I do. A dog. Okay. okay. Walk him up, Colt. So let's do a hind foot. I'm gonna do this side here and then I'll do the other side next week. Okay, so when I do hind feet, y'all, people are always scared a lot of horses. i tell y'all something, these horses will hurt you. Believe me, I've been kicked a lot. Mm -hmm. You learn that horses have to have respect. They have to be trained. They have to be properly trained. It's not my job to train them. The owner's job, the groom's job, the trainer's job, all right? My job is to show up and do the foot properly as fast as I can, get to the next one and get the next bunny. That's it. So when I do these horses, we generally make sure they're adequate, gentle, they can stand. I put my hand down there, pat on them and all that. So this is gonna be a real good frog to trim right here, okay? Y'all see me trim this frog out. So what I like to do or normally do on a horse is to see if there's any weight problems on the hind feet. So there's nothing, there's nine bones on this knee here, nine, nine bones. There's one here, there's two icicle bones, there's two here. Right? There's one here and there's one here and there's one, another one in there. Two more here. So, and these look like sesamoid seeds. That's what their name is, sesamoid bones. These two right here look like they, they're pulley system. So a horse, to help y'all out, and I don't lose you, a horse pulls like a rubber band. Watch what happens here. Watch, watch the suspensor area, watch everything. This is gonna go down in an angle. It loads, it loads, that leg's load. When it's loaded, all the tendons are tight. The orientation of every tendon is up in here, okay? The ligaments attach bone to bone, the tendons attach muscle. To, to the uh, tendon fibers, right? So, there we go. I'm gonna trim this horse on the hind end. Get her head up, get her head up, son. So, here we go. So, this horse here, the frog. Y'all see the frog now? It's got a lot of nasty 
all right. They can oh, wait. So, that's the frog trim. And all I'm going to do is just back the toe up. That's simple enough. I'm not trying to overcompensate. I'm not gonna left any stone unturned, right? So I'm gonna check the length on her. I'm gonna check everything. I'm gonna check the sole. So frog is not a frog also. Get infections, they can get nails in it, they can get it's, it's very important to clean your horse's feet so that you can see every day the aspect or what we call the foreign objects in the foot. So a lot of times a lot of times I don't normally do this, but since it's for here and my handler's sitting on the stand, so I'll do that. And that's what we'll do to that foot. Same thing on the other side. Get up. Get up. I'm gonna pull this shoe now. So when we pull a shoe, there are certain tools we use for that. Feels too good, you don't want to let it off the ground, do you? This is just like a flathead screwdriver. Just gets that nail head up. Watch this. Pop, 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 pop. Just enough. It's real simple. And these are pull offs. What we use to pull shoes with, they're real thick. And I actually used them to shape the shoe earlier because I left one of my bigger hammers on my trailer. So usually, man, I can't get that thing off. I can't get the shoe off. So this is a way to do it. Get underneath it. You ever have a horse, your fairy's not there, you squeeze it. Down, like that. And then, if you can't get that out, you can, once they get loose, you can pull them out like this, so you don't damage the wall. Just like that, just like that, and you just let it down, nice and jump. So the shoe's off, just as that quick as it went off. Now, horses generally, let's move her. Let me have her that still, so out of the way. Move that out of the way, I wanna turn around, but work the other side out. Okay. We'll walk her this way. Y'all can move back around. Cole, come around here. Come around here. Okay, so now, do y'all want to? Y'all can move positions. Um, if y'all come this way, you'll be able to see a little better. Now look. 